morning to all of you. Today we are going to discuss the basic principle, advantages, limitations and applications of the process compression molding. Before we start our discussion on compression molding, we are going to discuss what we have covered till now in this particular module. As you know, in this particular module, our focus has been on the processing of polymer matrix composites or we can say polymeric matrix composites. We have seen that what is the challenge of selection, why new and new materials are required. We have seen the basic concept of the polymer matrix composites. We have seen the comparison of polymer matrix composites with other conventional engineering materials. We have also seen that how the concept of polymer matrix composites is important in today's engineering scenario. Then we have seen that how to blend the two macro constituents together or how to make a composite material, the basic concept of a composite. We have seen three processes till now. We have seen the basic principle, advantages, limitations and applications of the hand layer process, the spray layer process and the pultrusion process. We have also seen that how the various processes for processing of polymer matrix composites can be classified broadly. So, today we will start our discussion with a broad classification of the processes which are used to fabricate products of polymer matrix composites. And then we will see where does compression molding fit into that particular diagram. And after seeing the role of compression molding in the fabrication of polymer matrix composites or processing of polymer matrix composites, we will see that what is the process, what is the procedure or what is the steps followed in the process, what are the steps followed in the process. And then we will see that what are the advantages, what are the limitations and what are the applications of the products or the applications of this particular process. Also during our discussion, we will focus on the control variables, the various processing parameters that we have to consider when we are making a product, when we are fabricating a product, when we are processing a product using the compression molding process. So, all these things we are going to study today in this particular lecture on compression molding. This is under the module 5 in which we are discussing the processing techniques for polymer matrix composites. So, let us start our discussion on compression molding. Now, this diagram you have already seen in some of the previous lectures. This gives the classification of the various processes for processing of polymer matrix composites. So, on your screen you can see the processing of polymer matrix composites can broadly be classified into three, open mold processes, closed mold processes and others. Here you can see in open mold processes you have hand layup, spray layup, tape layup, autoclave method. In closed mold processes you have compression molding, injection molding, transfer molding and in others you have pultrusion and filament winding. So, we are covering one process at a time. In open mold processes, we have seen hand layer process and spray layer process in the previous lectures. In the other type of processes, we have seen the pultrusion process. So, today we are going to see what do we mean by the compression molding process. In case of hand layup also, we are applying the pressure, but the pressure is not applied up to that extent. It is a hand layup and the whole process is manual. In case of compression molding, we have a compression molding setup in which we have a closed form of a mold in which the raw material is kept and it is pressed between the two die halves or two mold halves that we will try to understand with the help of a diagram. So, there is a difference between the hand layer process and the compression molding process although principally the two may be said to be having the same principle. So, let us start now the basic details about the compression molding process. Compression molding is a well known and one of the oldest technique to develop variety of composite products. So, if we go into the details of this particular statement, it gives us that it is a very versatile process, it is a very old process because it can develop variety of composite products. So, it is a old process and it is a versatile process because of its ability to develop or process a variety of composite products. 
it is a closed mold process with high pressure application. As I have already told in a hand layer process, it is a completely manual process in which the pressure applied is not very high. But in compression molding as you see on your screen in point number 2, it is a closed molding process and it applies high pressure application. So, it is a high pressure application, the pressure is applied on the raw material which has to be made into the final product. This composite processing method performs forming, uh, forming the product along with simultaneous curing. So, here the curing also takes place simultaneously. So, one of the difference between one of the processes which we have already seen that is pultrusion and the compression molding is in case of pultrusion, the continuous products com co product comes out of the final uh, die. As we have seen in case of a pultrusion process, the fibers are coming, they are impregnated in the resin bath, they enter the preformer, from preformer they are given a shape and finally they enter into the die. The die is in the heated condition and out of the die we get a cured product, final product and it is on a continuous basis. So, pultrusion is a continuous process, whereas a compression molding process is a discrete process. Here the products will be made in discrete shapes. We will have one product at a time, although the process may be continuous in which after one cycle we will go for another cycle, suppose we uh, undertake 100 cycles, in 100 cycles we will get 100 products. But one particular discrete product would be made in case of a compression molding process. So, the last point emphasizes this point that this composite processing method performs forming the product along with the simultaneous curing. So, it performs the action of forming as well as simultaneous curing. So, it will deform the raw material into the final product as well as the curing of process would also take place. So, what do we mean by curing? Curing is a process of conversion of the raw material into the final solid product. It can also sometimes is used, the name again is used as polymerization sometimes. So, basically this is a process in which the deformation and the curing conversion from a semi solid state to a fully solid state takes place simultaneously. So, we have a particular die and a mold half, we have sorry upper die and a lower die or we have two mold halves in which the raw material is kept and then the pressure is applied, the temperature is maintained and after that we get a final product after the curing is completed. So, we have to set the curing time that after this much amount of time or after time t the mold halves would open and the final product would be taken out. So, the process is fairly simple process as you can see I am drawing a very simple diagram. So, on your screen you can see a diagram in which I have shown the top half of the mold, this is the top half and on the contrary we have on the opposite side a bottom half, a bottom half. This is the bottom half of the mold. Now, pressure is applied from the top. and the bottom half is stationary. The raw material is kept on the bottom half of the mold. This is the raw material. And when a pressure is applied, the opening between the top half and the bottom half, this particular raw material would be deformed into that particular shape. So, here we can make this type of a product using this type of a top and the bottom half. So, we can see this particular raw material will get deformed like this when the top half of the mold would come down. So, this is the suppose the final product that we are going to get out of the compression molding process. 
So, here we can see we have a top half of the mold, we have a bottom half of the mold and we have a raw material and this raw material is a composite material and the bottom half is stationary and the top half is movable. The top half would be brought down and it will compress the raw material in between the cavity generated between the top and the bottom half of the mold and finally, we will get the raw material converted into the final product. So, basically during the process of conversion two things have taken place as we have seen on the slide. One is the deformation which has taken place, a flat raw material has been converted into the desired shape and the process of curing also has taken place. The process of curing and deformation has taken place simultaneously and the raw material has been converted into the final product. So, this is the basic principle of the compression molding process, but there are few things which have to be kept in mind that what should be the thickness of the raw material that will depend upon the final thickness of the final product that we are going to generate. What should be the pressure which should be applied? So, pressure is one of the important parameters which has to be controlled. Then there is another parameter that is temperature because the curing time will depend upon the temperature that we are maintaining and then there is another point that is the time for which the two halves of the mold will remain closed. So, these are few intricate points that have to be taken care of depending upon the type of raw material, depending upon the pressure that we are applying, depending upon the temperature that we are maintaining, we will be able to find out that for how much time the mold half should remain closed. So, these are the important process parameters or operating parameters or we can say critical parameters that have to be kept in mind when we are using the compression molding process for a particular application. So, in today's lecture this is a very basic principle of compression molding. We will try to understand this with the help of a diagram and we will see that what are the important parameters which have to be kept in mind. Also we will see what are the advantages of compression molding process and we will see that what are the limitations of this process. And finally, we will come to the point where we will emphasize the use of compression molding process in some of the important engineering applications. So, now let us take forward our discussion on the basic procedure of the compression molding process. So, we have seen the basic idea or the basic principle of the compression molding that the mold is made in two halves, top half and the bottom half and the cavity which is generated between the top and the bottom half is the place where the deformation or the formation and the curing of the raw material would take place. Then there are few important parameters which have to be kept in mind when we are using the compression molding process for deformation and curing of the raw material in order to convert the raw material into the final product. So, this process is suitable for small to medium size parts as we have seen that the top top half and the bottom half of the mold would generate a cavity among in between themselves. So, the one of the limitations we can say of this compression molding process is the size of the final product that we are going to get. So, process is suitable for small to medium size parts, but if you remember in case of hand layup and spray layup we have emphasized that hand layup and spray layup processes are very suitable or are most suitable for very large composite parts. So, side by side we are trying to highlight the importance of this process in comparison to the other processes which are used for the processing of polymer matrix composite products. So, hand layup and spray layup for large parts and compression molding for discrete small to medium size parts. So, simple to complex shapes can be easily produced that is one of the advantages we can say. In principle a compression molding machine is a kind of press which is oriented vertically with two molding halves top and the bottom halves which I have already shown or explained with the help of a diagram. We have already seen that the top half of the mold, bottom half of the mold, top half is movable, bottom half is stationary, the top half comes it deforms the raw material which is come which is placed on the bottom half of the mold and 
it gives the final shape to the product. So, the mold or the die in case of compression molding machine is made in two parts that is the top half and the bottom half. Generally, hydraulic mechanism is used for pressure application in compression molding. There can be other mechanisms also like pneumatic or mechanically the load may be applied with the help of gears, but in case of most of the compression molding setups, we make use of the hydraulic mechanism for applying the pressure in case of compression molding. Now, coming on to the raw materials which are used in case of, comp in case of compression molding. Now, what are the raw materials used? Reinforcing materials that are used or the reinforcement materials are can be glass fiber, carbon fiber, aramid fiber, natural plant fibers like sisal, banana, nittle, hemp and they we have seen in one of our previous lectures or in the introductory lectures of processing of polymer matrix composites. We have seen that there is a wide variety of natural fibers which are available and which are being used today in a lot many applications. Why? because natural fibers sometimes or maybe can be biodegradable and when these biodegradable natural fibers are combined with the biopolymers with the composite that we develop is a green composite which is fully biodegradable or sometimes maybe partially biodegradable but still it is better than the synthetic composites in which the matrix and the reinforcement are non biodegradable so the reinforcement fibers the trend today is towards the use of natural fibers but still we are using some of the synthetic fibers like glass fiber, carbon fiber and aramid fiber in most of our engineering applications. So, the raw material in case of polymer matrix composites, the reinforcement would be different types of fibers that is glass fiber, carbon fiber, aramid fiber or any type of a natural plant fiber. Now, this comes to the material of the reinforcement. Now, the shape of the reinforcement or the layup of the reinforcement would also change depending upon the requirement of the final product that we are going to make out of the compression molding machine. Now, depending upon the uh, requirement, we can have all the fibers in form of unidirectional mat or unidirectional tape in which all the fibers are oriented in one direction. We can have bidirectional woven mat in which the fibers are there in the warp and the weft direction or both in the longitudinal and the transverse direction we have the fibers woven. Then we can have the fibers stitched into a fabric form. We can have mat of randomly oriented fibers also sometimes that may be used and short fibers and chopped fibers can also be used in the compression molding setup. Now, depending upon the shape or the type of the fibers that we are using, we have to modify the setup slightly in order to suit to the requirements of a particular type of a raw material. So, one type of setup may not be suitable for all types of raw materials that we are using. So, this is something related to the reinforcement type. As you remember, the composite is made up of two important ingredients or two important constituents that is the reinforcement and the matrix. The reinforcement and the matrix combine together to make a composite. So, on the raw material aspect taking the reinforcement point of view, we have seen that what are the what are the materials of the fibers that can be taken and what are the shapes of the fibers that can be. Shapes means the form in which they are being used. The shape otherwise can be spherical, cylindric, uh, spherical, cylindrical different shapes are there, but we are not talking about the shape of the individual fiber. We are take, take talking about the form in which the fiber is being used. The form can be mat form, it can be stitched form, it can be uh, unidirectional form or it can be short fiber form. So, we are talking about the form of the fibers as they are placed in the bottom half of the mold. So, we have different types of fibers which can be used. On the other side what is the other thing as we have already discussed is the matrix which will go as a raw material. So, the matrix can be of different types. On your screen you can see thermosetting and thermoplastic matrices can be used or polymers can be used as the matrix material. Now, what are the different types of matrices that can be used that is the epoxy, polyester, polyvinyl ester. Then there are other examples on your screen which are some of the types of the thermosetting polymers which can be used as the matrix material in case of compression molding machine or compression molding setup. Similarly, we can use some kind of thermoplastic polymers also as the raw material for processing of composite parts by compression molding process. 
इन थर्मोप्लास्टिक्स वी कैन यूज पॉली प्रोपिलीन पॉली इथाइलिन पॉली कार्बोनेट पॉली विनाइल क्लोराइड पॉली इथर इथर कीटोन ए बी एस एक्रोनाइट्राइल ब्यूटाडाइन स्टाइरिन पॉली स्टाइरिन सो वी हैव डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मैट्रिस विच कैन बी यूज डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पॉलीमर्स विच कैन बी यूज एज द मैट्रिक्स मटीरियल इन ऑर्डर टू मेक अ कॉम्पोजिट प्रोडक्ट आउट ऑफ अ कंप्रेशन मोल्डिंग प्रोसेस we can see towards the end in the thermoplastic the biodegradable polymers such as polylactic acid soy based plastic starch based polymers etc so these are some of the biodegradable polymers which when combined with the natural fibers will result in a composite which may be partially or fully biodegradable so the focus today is again i am emphasizing towards developing composites which are biodegradable in nature because of the environment consciousness that has taken over most of the engineers and the scientists so it i am not saying that synthetic fibers are not being used or are should not be used but the trend today is towards natural fibers and biopolymers but the most of the application are still for the synthetic fibers such as the glass fiber the carbon fiber the aramid fiber most of the engineering applications of polymeric matrix composite use the glass fiber the carbon fiber and the aramid fiber as the reinforcement materials in different types of thermosetting and thermoplastic polymers which act as the matrix material so raw materials you can see as we have already discussed in one of the previous slides that this is a very versatile process so the versatility comes from the types of the raw material that we are using so the raw materials that we can use are different types of reinforcement and different types of matrices so when the different types of materials can be processed the process becomes versatile in nature because it can then make different types of composite product using one type of a reinforcement with another type of a matrix so different types of fibers different types of matrices combined together in the form of a composite product using the compression molding process so the process becomes a very very versatile process so we have seen the basic principle and we have seen what type of raw materials can be used in raw materials the maximum applications in of the compression molding process are for glass fiber carbon fiber and aramid fiber composites now compression molding procedure the basics of the compression molding procedure we have already seen in this particular case of compression molding process we have two matched metal molds are used to fabricate the composite product so we have two matched metal molds so the mold is made up of a metallic material any type of metallic material can be used the main properties are that it should be wear resistant it should not be dim uh, dimensionally unstable it should be dimensionally stable and there can be other properties like it should have tough it should have toughness it should be hard it should have good strength so there are few mechanical properties which should be there in the material which we are going to use for making the mold half but it can any uh, good metal can be used good metal in the sense which has good mechanical properties as i have already discussed that type of metal can be used for making the mold halves so two matched metal molds are used to fabricate the composite product so in this particular sentence two matched so matched has got a importance because the final product will be made in the cavity generated between the top half and the bottom half of the mold we will try to understand this with the help of a diagram also so it is matched means the top half of the mold should match with the bottom half of the mold and in between the cavity should be generated which is the exact shape of the final product that we want to generate i will explain this with the help of a diagram in the subsequent slide so the two mold half should be matching the base plate is stationary as i have already emphasized in the basic principle while the upper plate is movable or the upper mold half is movable reinforcement and matrix are placed in the metallic mold and the whole assembly is kept in between the compression mold so the raw material is kept the raw material is in the form of the reinforcement and the matrix so the two uh, parts or the two constituents of the final product that is the raw materials are placed on the placed in the metallic mold and this whole particular uh, thing is kept in the compression molding machine sometimes the mold is also a part of a compression molding setup the mold is fixed with the compression molding setup 
sometimes we want to give a machine more versatile nature we can have a replaceable mold in which we can change the shape of the mold the application of pressure and temperature can be maintained but the shape of the mold can be changed depending upon the final requirement so basically there are three things the shape of the mold the pressure that we are applying and the temperature that we are maintaining so two things are constant the temperature and the pressure but the mold shape of the mold or the cavity in the mold can be changed or the molds can be replaced in order to make a different shapes so that is again uh, giving a degree of versatility to the whole process of compression molding heat and pressure is applied as per the requirement for a definite period of time which we have already seen that we are going to maintain the temperature and the pressure as specified for that particular raw material and finally for a specific period of time we will allow the curing process to take place and finally the two mold halves would open and the final product would be taken out the material placed in between the molding plates flows due to the application of pressure and heat and acquires the shape of the mold cavity with high dimensional accuracy which depends upon the mold design so everything will depend upon the surface finish of the mold everything will depend upon the mold design because mold is we can say is the heart of the whole process mold is a place where the actual action is taking place mold is a place where the deformation of the raw material into the final product and the curing of the raw material into the final product is taking place simultaneously so with the mold design is very very important in case of the compression molding process so i will again read this particular sentence the material placed in between the molding plates so the raw material is placed in between the two mold halves flows due to the application of pressure so the material flows it tries to take the shape in bit that is being generated between the top and the bottom half of the mold cavity top and the bottom half of the molding plates or the molding halves or the molds so when the top and the bottom half would combine together there would be a cavity which which would be generated inside the two mold halves and the raw material would try to fill up that gap and take the shape of the gap that has been generated between the two mold halves and the temperature and the pressure facilitates this process of flow of the raw material into that cavity which has been generated in between the two mold halves and finally the curing process takes place the temperature also aids the curing process it helps the curing process is it accelerates the curing process so the temperature will help to accelerate the curing process and we will be able to make more number of parts per minute or more number of parts per hour so curing is done at a elevated temperature curing may be carried out either at the room temperature or at elevated temperature so if we have time we can give adequate room temperature curing but if we want to make large number of parts in smaller amount of time or quickly we would go for elevated temperature curing but certainly the important point is that curing may be carried out either at the room temperature or at an elevated temperature after curing the mold is opened and composite product is removed for further processing so finally the mold halves would open and the final product would be taken out and final processing would be done final processing in terms of some flash may develop or fins may develop or parting lines may develop which have to be trimmed off or finished before the final product is given for the final usage so in the these two slides we have seen how the compression molding actually takes place the raw material is kept on the bottom mold half the top mold half is movable the bottom mold half is stationary the top mold half comes and it deforms the raw material into the shape which is generated between the bottom and the top half of the mold the temperature and the pressure facilitates the movement or the deformation of the raw material between the two die halves for a particular movement of time or for a particular time interval the top and the bottom half remains closed and after the curing process has been completed the two mold halves are opened and the final product is taken out for final processing or for further processing 
Now you have a diagram, a very simple diagram on your screen. You can see in the diagram, you have a upper half mold and you have a lower mold half. This is the lower mold half and this is the upper mold half. You can see when this mold half would come down and take, the sh take its place here, this particular raw material, this is the raw material compound to be molded, this is the raw material and this is the hydraulic pressure, this is maintained in order to apply the pressure and this whole assembly would be coming down and compressing this particular raw material and these are the two guideways, these two vertical columns, these are the guideways, this total top assembly would move on these two guideways, the total assembly would come down and the upper mold half would compress or would deform this raw material. This raw material would take the shape of the cavity which is generated between the two mold halves. So, we have two mold halves and a cavity would be generated or we can say the shape would be generated between the top half and the bottom half and this particular raw material would be deformed into that particular shape which is generated between the top half or the upper half and the lower half of the mold. So, this is a hydraulic plunger which would apply the pressure between the two halves of the mold. So, we have a lower mold plate and we have an upper mold plate. Now, what is the role of these guide pins? These guide pins would align with the bottom half of the mold. This guide pin would come down and get fixed at its particular location here and this guide pin would come, these two simultaneously would come down when the top half of the assembly would come down to compress this material and guide pins would act for the exact location of the top mold half on top of the bottom mold half. So, this is a basic process in which the deformation would take place. Now, what are the important parameters which we have to look in this particular process? We have to see that how much hydraulic pressure is applied or how much hydraulic pressure is required. We have to see that what is the raw material that is used. Depending upon the raw material, we have to choose the pressure that how much pressure is required. Also, there would be heating elements around these molds, these molds would be heated molds. So, we have to see what should be the temperature that should be maintained. And finally, when the two mold halves would closed in one particular cycle or for making one particular product, what should be the duration or what should be the period of time for which the two mold halves should remain closed. That is another critical parameter which has to be kept in mind. So, there are three important parameters which have to be kept in mind. The pressure which has to be applied, the temperature which has to be maintained and the time or the duration for which the two, ha two mold halves would remain closed and the deformation and curing place would take place between the two mold halves. The duration for which we will allow the curing to take place. So, these are three important parameters. Again, I am emphasizing the pressure, temperature and the time of curing for which the two mold halves would remain closed. Once the curing has been completed, the two mold halves would open and the final deformed and cured product would be taken out for further processing. So, this is a most simplistic and a very easy representation of the compression molding process. Now, as I have explained along with the diagram, the controlling parameters in compression molding method for developing superior and desired properties of the composite are, now we want to make a good quality product, it should have good surface finish, there should not be any defects in the final product and in order to make a superior good quality high precision product, we need to control certain parameters. Now, what are these control parameters in case of a compression molding process? Now, these controlling parameters are the mold heating rate, how the mold should be heated, at what rate it should be heated, for what duration it should be heated, the mold cooling rate, before the next cycle the mold would have a cooling process. So, how it should be cooled, we can have some water circulation or we can have some air, air cooling can be used. So, we have to see what is the heating rate, what is the cooling rate, 
what is the maximum applicable pressure that can be applied for a particular raw material what is the compression rate at the rate at which the compression will take place we can have a sudden compression and we can have a slow compression so what is the rate of compression that we are we are using then the curing time we can have room temperature curing we can have curing at an elevated temperature so these are some of the control parameters which have to be kept in mind when we are using the compression molding process again i am reading the points that are there on the slide first is the mold heating rate the mold cooling rate the maximum applicable pressure that can be applied for, with the help of a compression molding setup the compression rate and the curing time so these are some of the points which have to be taken care or the most technically oriented points which have to be taken care then there are few other points which we have to take into account when we are using the compression molding process now what are these factors these factors are the thickness of the part that we are going to process that i have already explained when i was drawing a diagram and i told that thickness of the part is very very important which will dictate the the application of pressure and the maintenance of temperature and the curing time so thickness of part is also very very important when we are using the compression molding setup or the compression molding process then the position of the raw material in the mold is also very important that how and where to place the raw material in the mold so that the mold cavity or the cavity which is generated between the top and the bottom half of the mold is fully filled in the shortest possible time and the product that we get is a very high quality accurate and precise product mold area with respect to the area of the raw material which also has to be taken into account that what is the area of the mold because if we have large volume of the raw material then there would be some internal stresses some internal problems that may take place sometimes it may come out of the parting line where the two mold halves are meeting each other the excess material may flow out of that particular area and we may not be able to get the desired thick uniformity of the thickness in the final product so there may be some problems associated if the volume of the raw material is higher as compared to the volume of the uh, cavity which is generated between the top and the bottom half of the mold and then i have already emphasized usually the metallic materials are used for making the molds but the mold material is also very very important so some of the properties which i have already highlighted for the mold material are that it should be wear resistant it should have high strength hardness toughness because the load is coming on the material it is a pressure application technique in which the pressure is applied on the two halves of the mold so the mold material should be able to sustain that kind of loads that are coming so it should have high strength hardness toughness and it should be wear resistant so the mold the material that we are using or the material which we are choosing for making a mold should have all these desirable characteristics now what optimization of the critical process parameters so we have seen so many parameters or so many factors that have to be kept in mind when we are using the compression molding process but broadly these can be classified into three important parameters which have to be taken into account so on your your screen you can see a very simplistic diagram of the compression molding in which there are three critical parameters the time of curing or in uh, easy language or in a very understandable language we can say the time for which the two halves of the mold would remain closed so the time of curing that is one important critical parameter the time maintenance of the temperature around the mold and the pressure that we are applying so these are the three important parameters or three important critical parameters which would dictate the quality of the product which we are making using the compression molding process so quality is very very important so for making a good quality product our focus should be on the time of curing the temperature and the pressure application now what are the advantages of the compression molding process the production rate is high as the mold cycle time is few minutes only in case of hand layup when we are doing a room temperature curing it may take maybe 24 hours for the curing process to take place but in case of compression molding the production rate is high 
as the mode cycle time is a few minutes only. So, within a particular hour or maybe within a 4 hour shift, we can make a large number of products using the compression molding process. So, this is one of the advantages because large number of products can be made production rate is higher with the compression molding process. Good surface finish with different texture and styling can be achieved. So, the surface finish would depend upon the mold material and the mold we are using a metallic mold in case of the compression molding setup. So, good surface finish surface texture can be controlled and the good surface finish can be got or good surface finish can be achieved using the compression molding process. High part uniformity is achieved with the compression molding process. So, we have good production rate, good surface finish and high part uniformity. So, the part will have uniform dimensions all around. So, if you remember in case of spray molding, we have seen that the thickness uniformity is sometimes difficult to manage or difficult to control. In case of spray molding, spray, uh, spray layup process, if you remember, we have seen in spray layup, we are using a chopper gun or a, a gun which is used for delivering the raw material onto the mold surface. So, the thickness is difficult to control in the spray layer process, but in this particular process that is compression molding, the part uniformity is achieved. So, we can have uniformity in thickness along the total profile of the product. Good flexibility in part design is possible. So, we can have different types of designs as I have already told we, we can change the mold plates, we can have a different shape of uh, mold plates and we can use different types of designs for making the composite products. So, the flex it is a flexible process, it is a versatile process, different types of part designs can be made using the compression molding setup. Extra features like inserts, bosses and attachments can be molded in during the process. So, some at sometimes in a particular part design, we require inserts or sometimes we require bosses. So, these type of extra features can also be incorporated into the product that we are going to make using the compression molding process. Raw material wastage is also minimum because in case of hand layup and spray layup process, if you remember the extra resin is squeezed out of the final product. But in this particular case, we are going to put the metered amount of raw material in between the two mold halves and the wastage of the raw material would also be minimum in case of the compression molding setup. Maintenance cost is low, residual stresses are absent or negligible in the molded component. So, there are no residual stresses that are developed using the compression molding process. Twisting and shrinkage in product is reduced, therefore, dimensional accuracy is also good. So, the material in this case would flow in between the cavity or the mold cavity generated between the two mold halves. So, the dimensional accuracy that we are going to achieve in this particular process would be extremely higher or extremely high. So, twisting and shrinkage in the product is also minimum. So, these are few advantages of compression molding product uh, process and we can make good quality, dimensionally accurate, highly precise products using the compression molding process. Now, what are the disadvantages of compression molding process? Now, the disadvantages are due to the expensive machinery and parts, the initial capital investment associated with the compression molding process is high. So, the, we have to procure the machine. The high initial investment in case of compression molding process is one of the disadvantage, which is not there in case of the spray layer process or the hand layer process, because those are manual processes. Here we require a setup, we require a machine. So, the initial investment in case of compression molding process is high. The process is suitable for high production volume only. It is not economical for making a small number of parts or for prototyping application. Because if we are spending some amount of money for procuring a compression molding machine, we should we should use use it for a large number of products or for a high production volume. We should not procure a compression molding machine for only making four to five or to ten or fifteen prototypes. So which is very very which is a general common sense that we should not buy a sophisticated or we should not buy a very expensive product or a very expensive machine for making very few 
parts. So, if few parts or prototypes have to be made, they can be easily made by the hand layer process or the spray layer process. But if the production volumes are comparatively higher or we have a large production volume or high production volume, suppose we, are, we want to make 2 lakh components per year or we want to make 5 lakh components in 2 years. So, for those type of large production volumes, we can go for the compression molding setup. But for small volume production, the use of the compression molding is not advisable. Sometimes secondary process processing in terms of trimming of product is required after the compression molding. So, that is also one of the disadvantage because the final product that we are getting may have some fins or flashes, so which have to be trimmed off. These fins or flashes may develop at the develop at the parting line where the two mold halves are meeting each other. So, in that case, these have to be trimmed off. So, final secondary processing in terms of trimming is required before the product is put into the market for sales or before the use of the product by the customer. So, secondary processing is required. Sometimes uneven parting lines are there, which is also one of the disadvantages. This may take the uh, uneven parting lines may take place because of many reasons. One of the reasons can be the shift in the two because we have not used the location pins as we have seen in the diagram. So, if those pins are absent, location pins are not there, there may be slight shift in the two half of the mold when the two molds are matching. They, there may be slight shift. Because of this shift, we may have uneven parting lines. There is also a limitation on the mold depth. So, that is the mold design. One of the limitation is on the depth. We can use a specific depth or a critical depth only for making the products by the compression molding process. So, depth of the design, mold design or the depth of the product is one of the limitations in case of the compression molding process. So, limitations are in terms of production volume, limitations are in terms of mold design. So, these are some of the limitations or the final product, final quality of the product. We may have some fins or flashes which have to be trimmed off. So, these are two or three important areas which have to be looked into when we are proposing the use of a compression molding process for developing the composite product out of raw materials of a specific category. So, these are few things which we should keep in mind that what should be the quality that we are going to get, what is the production volume that we are targeting. So, these things if we keep in mind at earlier stages, all these limitations can be done away with. Now, what are the applications? The applications of the compression molding process are numerous. There the app this particular process is used in for making large number of or large different types of composite products for different applications. On your screen you can see this method is equally applicable for both thermosetting and thermoplastic polymer based composite products. Application spectrum ranges from kitchen goods to automobiles, toys, electrical and aeroplane parts. So, different types of parts or components which can be used in kitchen, which can be used in automobile, which can be used in toys, aeroplanes, etc. can be made. Now, typical product, now what are the specific applications that are the automobile panel, roofs, life gates, battery trays, fender hoods, bumpers, spoilers, air deflectors, furniture, kitchen bowls and trays, dinnerware, buttons, large containers, medical devices, ultrasonic. Now, some of these particular products can only be made up of a polymer and in some cases we can have the fibers impregnated with the polymer. So, compression molding can also be used for simple polymer products also. So, here we can see different types of applications are there for the compression molding process. So, in today's lecture we have seen that what is the compression molding process? We have seen the different aspects of the compression molding process in terms of the process details, the procedure of the process. With the help of the diagram, we have tried to understand that how the process actually takes place. What are the critical parameters which should be controlled in order to make a good quality composite product out of a compression molding process. Then we have seen that what are the various advantages of using the compression molding process, what are the various limitations of the compression molding process and finally, we have come to the point where we have seen that where the compression molding process is finding the application. We have seen there are large number of products which can be made by the compression molding process. 
in our further subsequent discussion in this particular module on processing of polymer matrix composites, our focus would be on some other processes such as filament winding and we would focus on filament winding, try to understand the process details, the critical parameters as well as the advantages, limitations and the applications of the filament winding process. Thank you.